Hello there friends, you are on the CSGO news channel as always. There are only a few days before the blast, which means that very soon the new season will be officially opened. Meanwhile, almost all the teams have announced their lineups. We will discuss what Simple is doing while Navi is preparing for the blast. I have collected all the juiciest and most interesting news as always just for you. Let's get straight to it. So, let's start with the official reshuffles. Finally, we waited for this and Vitality presented their new lineup. And they did it in a big way. They took a picture of their new team at the PSG home stadium together with one of the main stars, Neymar. Everything turned out as expected. Sphinx from Ents came to Misuta's place. Someone says that this is a cool reinforcement. Someone on the contrary does not really believe in the new composition. What do you think? Will Vitality show a decent game now? For example, this is what Yanko says. When Vitality assembled a new team at the beginning of the year, I immediately wondered, who will be the second star of the lineup? Who will be in the role that Electronic took in Navi? Maybe Majesk, but ideally it should have been Misuta, since he is young and has high potential. As it turned out, that was Dupree, which was very strange. I am convinced that there should be a star shooter next to Zaiwu who will help him. Sphinx is a great option for Vitality, but I'm not sure he will bring it to the top. It is not clear whether he will immediately overcome all the communication problems and start winning tournaments. The level of Navi and FaZe is incredibly high right now. To get to it, you need very significant progress. Well, as for Masuta himself, he and NBK moved to Falcons, now officially. In general, we all found out about this a few weeks ago, so all the rumors were confirmed again. The announcements don't end there. Sprout is next in line. A team that is constantly in the top 30 of the best in the world, but they always lack something to get to a higher level. Maybe Refresh and Xiphon will finally help them. They were also officially presented. It turns out that Copenhagen Flames sold off all their assets. Nikodaz and Roy transferred to Fnatic. Xiphon to Sprout, Uxi to G2, Jabi to Heroic. It's like some kind of talent forge for the whole pro scene. By the way, about Uxi. Nico recently posted a photo in his stories where you can see that they are already practicing together with JKS and the new captain. This was found out by the community from their photos in Steam. The wittiest ones conducted an investigation and confirmed it. Yes, it's Uxi and JKS. But here, in theory, no one has been hiding anything this much. Everyone has known everything for a long time. And by the way, G2 has already officially announced their new lineup. But the Copenhagen Flames themselves decided not to wait and have already put together their new project. A combination of experience and youth, somewhat similar to the previous composition of the Flames. Let's see what happens. Maybe in a year, these guys will be in demand of the tier 1 teams. Well. While someone is just trying to break into the tops of CS, old experienced veterans decided to show the young what Swedish last dance is. Get right, Forrest, Freiburg, Lecro, and Jaquinho assembled the squad for the qualifiers for the major, but it didn't work out to make that much noise at all. They fell out in the first circle, defeated by Avangar. They were winning 15-11 and lost in overtime. In general, not everyone succeeds like Fallen in his retirement age to basically destroy the young. Fortunately, these are not the last qualifiers and there will be three more attempts. Just like the younger team. Yes, the guys finally assembled a full lineup of five people. They also took Kios and Michu. But even that didn't help them overcome the almighty Roofire and his team backs. And we have a few more announcements. What good is a news release without Brazilian reshuffles? They have a pro scene there that lives by its own laws. Recently, Oplano presented their new lineup. A Brazilian lineup, that is. They recruited veterans there like KNG and Yell. But probably, the most shocking thing is the price tag they put up for the players. The other day, Payne bought Zavi from Sharks, which have been in the HLTV Top 100 for more than 4 months. So according to rumors from Brazilian sources, Payne paid $325,000 for this player. I looked at the stats. Not bad actually. He scores a rating of 
but it's on their stage. He didn't really play against Europe. Here, no one wanted to take JKS for 200,000, and the Brazilians are ready to give 300 with no doubt. So that's the crazy way their money is pouring into the scene. And by the way, since we are talking about the HLTV rating, there were some changes yesterday. Usually in the summer, the rating mostly stands still, but now many top teams have made substitutions and this naturally affected the top. NIP sharply flew into the top 5, and G2 flew out of the top 10. This has not happened to them since the beginning of 2021. We'll talk about G2 later, but as for NIP, there is news about Device, and it is not rosy at all. Campus recently gave an interview for the Swedish Mass Media Edition, where he said that after Device went inactive, it was very difficult for them. But now they have already adapted and will play on the next major without him. So it looks like we won't see Nikolai until the end of the year. That's how the once best players of the world go into the sunset for good. Well, as for G2, then Richard Lewis gave out another portion of pure hate in their direction. By the way, apparently he finally returned. He left esports for a couple of weeks and now, as if nothing had happened, he continues to produce the news and his opinion. G2 will fail hard with the new roster. Hooksy and JKS are taken out of desperation. If it were my team, I would not say goodbye to Alexi B, especially when we see what kind of replacement G2 has found for him. Alexi B's kicking out tells me that G2 does not have a clear understanding of where to move and what to do. Usually, we have seen how Ocelot has his own vision of team development, which he is ready to back up with spending on players. He listens to the wishes of the team and selects a new player for it, even if he will need to spend a lot of money on it. What I see now is really more like despair. I have never seen such a mediocre player who would be so overrated as JKS. His finest hour was in 2020 when he played in North America and got into the absurd top 20 ranking from HLTV.org at the end of the year. As for the captain, when I found out about Elixir B's departure, I thought that some kind of star had already been bought in his place. It turned out that it would be Hooksy. Is there at least one G2 fan who is happy about this transfer? Of course not. His stats are even worse than Alexi B's. And what to do with Nico's unofficial leadership? Everyone understands that while you're in G2, you have to listen to Nico. How can someone like Hooksy approach Nico and say that this main star is wrong about something? If you need a Danish captain with bad statistics, then why not take MSL? At least he has a long history of success and the opportunity to shut Nico up. Well finally, there is news about reshuffles from Ents. Recently they posted several emojis on Twitter where many quickly saw a hint on some payas from movie star writers. Well Overdrive also wrote in his telegram channel that according to his info, Valde is also already in Ents. So we can say the composition is ready. I think these 5 players can be even stronger than the last ones. In general, the new season promises to be very interesting. And of course, how can I not tell you about Simple? You all know that he will miss the blast and head trick will replace him. But many have a question. What about Sasha? Will he come back at all or not? Now everyone really does not fully understand what is happening with Simple and how long his vacation will last. His friends, streamers Eveline and Zloy said that they are going to some kind of fun tour. So apparently Simple is not currently dealing with problems with the apartment, visas and so on. He just wants to relax. Мне кажется, у приватбанка будут ко мне вопросы. Я такие деньги за год не зарабатываю, ты куда, блядь, кидаешь? Что случилось? В тебе будет машина. Мне одна людина дуже багато скинула грошей. Я нікого не просила нічого. 
И это будет даже не Жигули. А какую папа машину называл? Volkswagen Golf. Ну, в тебе таких может быть две. Скажи, что мама дяко ей низко кланяется. Да, хорошо. Мы с этим человеком не общаемся долго, типа мы не знакомы, и человек просто кидает такие суммы, много скинули. Ты блять, человек, а зачем? Так там и так хватало. Мне сейчас карточку, блять, это заблокируют за такие суммы. Это 50 тысяч маминых зарплат. По-моему, 6 тысяч гривен. Ну, вот она зарабатывала по 10, по 12 тысяч. Ты обдуманное решение сделал, точно? Прикиньте, стрим закончил, Саня такой, вон стул. Блин, а можешь вернуть назад, пожалуйста, я это? Просто я боюсь, что, короче, какой-то чел подписался Simple в Дискорде, я сейчас позвоню. Да, я сейчас в Нигерии. Классно. Мадам, а где вы находитесь? А, наверное, в Киеве. Я просто боялась, что ты скажешь запретку. А я как подготовился, а? Вообще, заебись. Большое тебе спасибо еще Не за что. Мы же все-таки делаем маме сюрприз день рождения. By the way, this is probably a new or future Simple's girlfriend, streamer Barbie Girl. Sonya, as you know, is a specialist in streamers. In general, where did it all start? Last night, he joined her stream and donated a very large amount of money. Barbie girl was collecting donations for a car for her mom's birthday. It's hard to say exactly how much Sonya donated. Someone says $100,000, someone says $150,000. But as they themselves summed up, you can buy two cool cars with that money. Меня просто интересует этот вопрос. Нет, э, ну как ты и сказала, что закончится стрим, я сразу попрошу вернуть деньги. Если ты откажешься, то я подам на тебя в суд. Все-таки ты из Украины, с Киева. И мне очень будет легко выиграть это дело. Я буду Джонни Деппом, ты будешь Эмбер Хёрд, ты будешь плакать, мама будет сидеть в суде, но я все-таки выиграю это дело. Смотрите, я и Александр, мы расстались. И каждый из нас делает то, что он хочет. И особенно тратит свои деньги на что он хочет. Вот. Maybe Sonya really just felt burned out and he needs more time to rest. Now he will rest with his friends, get himself a new girlfriend, and then with a light heart will succeed on the second major in his career. Well, maybe he won't return to CSGO at all and will go into streaming. I think he will definitely earn no less than now. Friends, we are waiting for the start of the new season, and I don't say goodbye for a long time. See you soon!